YouTube. Greetings from Elysia Iber Reviewer to the Combiner Wars Retrospective. This isn't so much a review of one figure as it is the entire series and my opinions on what Transformers is today. Feel free to skip this one as it's just going to be re-rambling and that being said I'm not going to really care if my daughter makes too much noise so you might hear some little Abigail noises. Maybe. First off, though, I would like to send a huge shout out to Transgo Jobot of Graphics Motion for helping me key out the stop motion aspect of the Brawl parody you just saw. Thank you, man. That has knocked a good hour or so off my workload, and I do not appreciate it enough. Thank you. For those that are still confused as to what the Nintendo console titles were all about for all the Bruticus video titles, Brawl is both the name of a Combaticon and the third in the Super Smash Brothers series, and anything worth doing is worth overdoing, so I made jokes all throughout each of their review comparing Swindle to 99 Smash Bros. 64, Blast Off to 2001's Melee for the GameCube, Brawl to, well, 2008's Brawl, Vortex to the Project M mod for Brawl, Onslaught to Smash 4 for 3DS, and finally Bruticus to the Wii U version. Alrighty then, with that out of the way, let's talk about the last three years where we've been inundated with combiners. All the combiners. Who would have thought Hasbro would come through and give us what we wanted for years? I mean, they've been sort of giving us guest adults for years, but it's all been kind of... well... So let's hope to say they weren't some okay moments, such as that Legends movie Devastator, which was somehow better than the Supreme box set that came out? Figure that one out. And then there was the Bruticus, which somehow made both Brawl and Swindle tanks, and Vortex and Blast off both helicopters. R right. And follow Cybertron, which... Okay, that's not a combiner. That's... The heck is this thing, anyway? No, back in 2011, if you wanted a combiner, you either had to take those figures that Hasbro plopped out and said, You must love our laziness. And then give them any number of third-party upgrade kits, like booster kits or so forth. Or, go the third-party route entirely. And third-party was just starting out back then, and classics was all the rage, so options were limited and crazy expensive. So by the time Combiner Wars was actually announced, there were two Devastators, a Menasaur, an upgraded first-party, third-party hybrid Bruticus, a Cybertronian Bruticus, with Warbertron and Guardia being teased and on the way. And then Combiner Wars hit us like a freight train. This was the first time that Hasbro was actually making Combiners in G1 style, but more faithful to the comics that were currently running. And man, fun times were about to be had. So what did we end up getting? Well, first off, we got Motion Superion and a little bit of Menasaur. I have no idea why this was done, as it made Air Raid a pain in the neck to get, and drove the prices up and... Blech, what a nightmare. But left thousands of drag strips to be picked up when Wave 2 hit, 
as the rest of Manasaur and Air Raid had a 50-50 chance of showing up at your store. Seriously, Hasbro? What gives with that? Initially, I wasn't going to pick any of this lineup, as I was on my high and mighty third-party high horse, where it's, oh, third party is so much better. But it was Shockwave 514 and one of his reviews that kind of piqued my interest. It was actually the Fireflight figure he did a review on. So I said, why not, and picked up Superion, but left drag strip. And what a figure! Initially, I assembled it and went, yeah, okay, he's not bad. And then I played with it more, and eventually I was playing with it all the time. Seriously, Hasbro using the upside-down Voyager to make a torso idea blew my mind out of the water, as that was the first time I had ever held that concept in hand. And it was just such a tidy torso. I loved it so much. I was even so excited that I immediately picked up Menasaur upon its release, thinking maybe I could replace that train wreck of a complex nightmare that his fans project take on the guy. And I set up Hasbro Menasaur, started playing with it for 5 seconds, and... Oh, such a disappointment, and that really came across in the review. 30 minutes, give or take, of me ranting over such a stupid design flaw. I honestly just blitzed the filming for the review and made the whole thing in the course of a weekend, and sold the figure by the end of that weekend as I was moving by the end of the month. Ironically, this is my most viewed video, and that kind of irks me. But what can you do, really? In retrospect, the limbs, I guess, weren't that bad but Menasaur as a whole still is. And for those that protest and say he can be fixed with the Perfect Effect kit, do you really call this fixed? This guy can't move. He looks better, and that's where it ends. Like, they remove all articulation for this set, and that's no good for me. All right, so after I moved, I picked up Defensor. Good grief, this guy was cool! I loved Rook. I still do. What a show stealer. Streetwise, blech. I'm still not a fan of the car mode. First Aid took some modifications and made an amazing dedicated arm, and Blades is... Blades. I managed to get a Groove figure, and well, I like that figure too, and that became my Defensor. Rook would later be used for something else. And then finally, it's Bruticus. Bruticus took everything I love about this entire line and packed it into one solid figure. Rook became Swindle, and they even made some improvements over that. Brawl is easily the best deluxe figure that has ever with all that stability and articulation and anybody says different is a well-rounded individual who can think for themselves has their own opinion and i fully support that but i love brawl through and through the jet and helicopters are my favorite arms and that's what they became here and my second favorite torso just happens to be hotspot basically i love bruticus and him being pretty much the final combiner wars figure just oh they did so well as for the other combiners I got, Victorion was just not my thing. Everybody had a freak out over it being female, and how cool is that that she's finally female, our combiner? Oh, Frankly, I don't care about gender purity in Transformers. I call them he's because apparently they identify as that, according to the writers. But to me, they're just robots, and the very notion of robots like Chrome Dome and Rewind, or Optimus and Alita dating, or whatever, just seems unnecessary. Essentially, I enjoy the kids' show about fighting robots that Chinese puzzle themselves into planes, trains, and automobiles and stuff for what it is. A kids' show about fighting robots that Chinese puzzle themselves into planes, trains, and automobiles. So, basically, I wasn't hyped over Victorion. I still don't like the cars as limbs, I think the colors were puke-worthy, and I eventually sold the darn thing at a toy fair for 90 bucks. Wherever you are, man, I hope you're enjoying it. And then Computron. Ugh, Computron. Like, what is this? Granted, I like the new hands and feet, but seriously, what is this? The colors are all weird, strafe as an arm is outright useless, I like Nose Cone, but found his colors just a bit weird, though at least he's a tank and not whatever Unite Warriors are trying to rock out, and then Scattershot is Silverbolt for some reason. Aside from that, we get Scrounge and whatever his little shuttle gun thing becomes. Why, you may ask? Ah, uh, you know, because Computron needs a special arm to make strafe feel better. There's not another one like it. I guess it works... Sorta. I don't know. I have the Computron, I don't like him, and I'm really thinking about selling him if the price is right. Aside from that, though, I also have Betatron out of the standalone Scattershot. And this is what I find the most interesting and slightly frustrating about Hasbro did. They did not finish their McDonald's collect-em-all kit. Here's what I mean. Superion has Alpha Bravo. 
nobody wants him, and he has self-esteem issues about that anyway. So we get a quick slinger online, and Superion is complete. Menasaur got off-road for the same deal, and then there's the same deal with Rook, and then you get Bruticus, and blast off as a jet? Really, Hasbro? Couldn't have just called him Takeoff, and then did another online release for a shuttle blast off? So that being said, I got two blast offs. One for Bruticus because I like the jet anyway, and gave that guy a custom head. So what are we left with? Betatron with a limb that corresponds to what the generally accepted configuration of each combiner had the limb with replaced. How cool is this? It even gives the land vehicles his legs, and the air vehicles and arms with a superior torso. This is awesome! For now, I'm using the Hasbro Computron hands and feet, but eventually I want to get the Toy Hacks conversion kit for Scattershot and the perfect effect hands and feet. I'm still working out a name for this guy, though. Unwantatron, or maybe even sticking with the Betatron name. Who knows? As for the combiners, I wasn't able to or didn't want to pick up. Devastator, Galvatronus, Optimus Supreme, or whatever he's called, I'm just going to call him Optimus Supreme, and Skyrain. Devastator is huge and quite a sight to behold. I've actually seen one in person and was thoroughly impressed. However, I have a Devastator in the scale I want that doesn't massively tower over the rest of them. Practically masterpiece indeed. Galvatronus I didn't care about. Optimus Supreme, or whatever he's called, is just Menasaur with new colors. Oh boy, paint me a happy camper and Skylinks never came out here. I don't know why. I was actually semi-interested in him, and I was kind of going to pick him up, but I really do think it's cool that another generation of kids and fans of Transformers is able to pick up Optimus, Ironhide, Sunstreaker, Mirage, Prowl, Wheeljack, Hound, Smokescreen, and Trailbreaker. That is a really cool thing that I fully support. I also still stand by my idea that one review where I said they should make an Inferno torso with Ratchet, Red Alert, Jazz, and Blue Streak. Maybe even another wave after that, like Grapple, Hoist, Sidestripe, Tracks, and maybe Skids? Maybe even another wave of that, just like one of Fully Jets, Starscream, Thundercracker, Skywarp, and Acid Storm, and a, a torso of, I don't know, Starscream, and then you can make S Sunstorm or whatever he's called as an arm. I don't know. I think it's nice for a new generation of fans to get these characters, and yeah, in the end, I'm happy with what we got, though. So that's been Combiner Wars. Not even including the Unite Wars, as I never really got into that side of the Combiners. I'm wildly amazed that Hasbro would even consider offering these figures. But at the same time, with Titans Return now in full swing, I think this presents another problem, guys. I think Transformers as a brand is dying. Hear me out on this one. In an interview with TF Source did with Pia, he made a comment about the third-party market and how saturated it is with four companies trying to compete alongside Takara over Masterpiece figures, and... Eventually, something's going to give, and something, none of us really know what that something is, but something big is going to happen. And now, combiners are a huge thing. After that, though, TF started diving into Headmasters headfirst. It's not good enough to have just a figure like Reveal a Shield Tracks, Classics Mirage, Generations Wheeljack, or anything like that as standalone figures. No, Hasbro has kind of run out of Season 1 and 2 characters from the G1 cartoon to use as deluxe figures. We're now at a time in the rebooted Transformers series where nobody really cares anymore about the movies that everyone got back on board with the brand in the first place. Figures are no longer a one of amazingly designed figure with one accessory. No, say hello to gimmicks, gimmicks, gimmicks. Combiners have their coolness factor built into them in the sense they make a bigger guy, so that's awesome and you can just leave it at that, but after that, what can you do? Headmasters. And now we're at a point where we were in 1988. Gimmicks galore. We have figures that are just out there in concept with the new reused gimmick of headmasters. People that are just folded in half and they make a head. And if they don't have a head, they're a force triple changer. So you get base modes and other vehicles that characters shouldn't be. It makes me wonder when Titan's Return is done, what's next? Obviously there's something, otherwise there wouldn't be the whole Combiner Wars trilogy that they keep saying is a trilogy. But I really don't know what they could do at this point. The shelving space at my local Walmart and Toys R Us kind of backs me up here. Even two or three years ago, Hasbro said My Little Pony is now the biggest selling IP that they have. We now live in a time where kids are all about Marvel and Star Wars with movies of the, both of those brands coming out annually. Transformers just, it kind of isn't relevant anymore, and Hasbro is bringing out all the stops to try and keep it alive like they did back in the 80s, and we saw where that went. It ended up at Beast Wars. And aside from Masterpiece, I don't know where TF is headed anymore. So anyway, this was an issue I've been wanting to address for about a year now, and that's also been my Combiner Wars retrospective. After this, yeah, I'm kind of done reviewing Gestalts. They take forever to cover. 
So, what's next for me? Headmasters for sure, I will be covering a few of those. A few G1 figures I want to cover, and definitely some masterpieces. But after that, well, I guess I'll just have to wait and see. Thank you for all joining me for over the years for my guest salt coverage. And again, massive shout out to Transgo Jobot of Graphic X Motion for helping me with the intro parody. Link to his channel in the description. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow Reviewer signing off for the last time of a combiner thing that I'm going to be talking about. At least for a good month or two. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow Reviewer. I said that.